Hey everybody. I'm uh, doing some filler videos here today because I'm uh, in Ellicott City and I'm kind of grounded because I got to get my belt fixed in next week or two as I keep mentioning. But uh, we got some signage here in old Ellicott City, a little bit. This says the Baltimore Regional Trail and I'll read it to you. During the Civil War, Howard County and the Baltimore region exemplified the divided loyalties of Maryland's residents. People here had commercial ties to both North and South and the secessionist sympathies erupted in violence April 19, 1861 in the Baltimore riots when pro-Confederate mobs attacked Massachusetts troops en route to Washington, D.C. Because of Baltimore's strategic importance, President Abraham Lincoln acted swiftly, stationing federal troops in the city and jailing civilians suspected of disloyalty. And Benjamin Butler, of course, as we know, was the general who uh, kind of commandeered things and oversaw the initial stages of this and set up uh, artillery on, uh, on Federal Hill. Some of the area residents joined the Confederate Army, in fact many did, about one third uh, as I just read, while many others supported the Union. Before and during the war, local African Americans helped with and used the Underground Railroad to achieve their freedom after the Emancipation Proclamation permitted African American enlistment. U.S. colored troop regiments were recruited and trained in Baltimore and the vicinity. Naval vessels such as the US, USS Constellation, which uh, sits there in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, supported the Union war effort on the Chesapeake Bay and the high seas, countering the flow of contraband goods to the Confederacy. In 1864, during Confederal General Jubal Early's attack on the Washington defenses, of which I mentioned a little bit, uh, otherwise known as the Battle of Monocacy, or the uh, third incursion into Maryland, Major Harry Gilmore's cavalry threatened Baltimore, burned nearby bridges, and raided supplies. Oh, I just missed a train going by at the B&O. Uh, and I'm going to get back to the B&O again because we have to uh, do some more on Monocacy and uh, my buddy Lou Wallace. But anyways, throughout the war the city served as a hospital, much like Frederick, and prisoner of war assembly center. Which was actually, as I've mentioned, very much, where's Annapolis? Here's Annapolis. Parole is right here. Parole was actually the official first parole camp. Uh, it was a, an encampment and it served as a... Uh, the first or, um, first and last, I think, prisoner exchange while we were still exchanging prisoners. Political prisoners were detained at Fort McHenry, home of the Star Spangled Banner, period. They forget to mention, as I've mentioned before, that Frank Key Howard, the grandson of Francis Scott Key, was one of those detained at Fort McHenry. Despite the region's divided loyalties, Baltimore remained a Union stronghold until the end of the war barely by the skin of its teeth and only because Lincoln gave it the backhand. So, haven't given that commentary. I crossed the street so we have more light. I want to add a couple things on to uh, some of the comments that I've, or some of the videos that I've made lately because uh, unfortunately I finally kind of addressed race. And uh, since I have addressed race to a degree, I want to clarify that up or, or follow that up with a couple other things. Uh, just a little couple FYIs. Um, I'm not, I, no, I don't think I've really mentioned this. Uh, so I'm a Maryland boy through and through. I was, uh, I spent my childhood in Laurel, Maryland in Prince George's County. And I, uh, I spent my, more or less my teen years in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, which is um, kind of uh, in, in the middle of things, um, just outside of DC a little bit. Um, when I was a kid in Laurel, Maryland, I actually encountered, I actually had a, a, a uh, encountered quite a bit of racism as a, as a young lad um, between uh, give away my, I'm not going to give away my, uh, away my birthday, but uh, um, when I was a young kid, um, let's just put it this way, it was a few decades ago, and <clears throat> Laurel, Maryland, I'm afraid to say, was actually a pretty racist place at the time. Um, now, at that time, it hadn't been built up as much, nearly as much as it is now these days. Um, there weren't a whole string of uh, auto dealerships on Route 1. Um, the Laurel Lakes Mall hadn't been built yet. Um, and, and Laurel mostly consisted of an old Main Street, give you a little shot of the Tiber Creek here, which flows out to the Patapsco. Um, Laurel at that time pretty much consisted of some neighborhoods uh, and a historic Main Street. Um, you know, one high school, one post office, so on and so forth. It was just about a small town at the time um and, and during that time like i said it, <laughs> it it wasn't the most liberal place in terms of uh racial uh rela race relations um when i was a kid i actually 
on my walk home, by the way, this is a, a peach soda and it's mighty yummy. Uh, when I was a kid and I would walk home from uh, elementary school, I quite often uh, encountered uh, other kids, uh, even teens who would verbally, uh, you know, hurl slurs at me. Um, you know, you, I'm not gonna repeat them, but um, some of you might be familiar with the, some of the stereotypical uh, slurs against Asian Americans. And some of these teenagers actually um, used intimidation, um, never physically attacked me, but they, well, uh, just about did by throwing beer bottles at me when I was about five years old, walking home from school. Um, the point of this story and the one I'm about to tell you, uh, let me just tell you that one first and I'll try to make this quick. Um, so I'm down here in Old Ellicott City again. And um, when I first moved to this area, which is kind of like my third home, in Maryland um, <clears throat> one of the first things that I encountered uh, was uh, I, I wanted to investigate the uh, Patapsco River um, down here in Old Ellicott City and so I did and I thought it would be a kind of fun swimming spot and it kind of was however I quickly realized you're not gonna believe this uh, and I moved here about seven years ago so that would make it uh, I don't know 2017 or so when I first moved here, the, the, the swimming hole on the Patapsco, at least here in, in Old Ellicott City, was kind of only open to whites. Um, in other words, I'd often quite, uh, quite often see other kids playing in there and, and going for swims. Um, <clears throat> and it all seemed kind of normal. Um, they happened to be mostly white and I didn't think a whole lot of it at the time. But um, not too much longer after I moved here, uh, there was a handful of uh, younger black kids, um, let's call them adolescents, you know, maybe like 10 to 14 mostly. <clears throat> Not a whole throng of them, but you know, a handful or so, might have been about five or six or eight at the most. And I saw a handful of these kids being led out of the river area by Baltimore County Police. Uh, I can't tell you how upset that made me. Um, it was like 2017 when this happened and after that after that I would go down to the river and still see hordes and hordes of, of white kids uh, going swimming using rope swing uh, rope swings um, to the degree uh, so, to the degree sometimes where uh, there, there would be groups of like 15 to 20 to 25 at a time basically almost having a beach party down there unmolested with nobody bothering them um, eh. You know, I, 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 I may never really convince some people of certain things one way or the other, but I just want to give you a little bit of, uh, a little more insights into my life, um, I guess we'll call it then and now, um, and, and let you know that I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more firmly against racism or against slavery. Um, the points that I have made in the videos up till now are framed in purely technical terms from with a detached cold eye of a historian and should be seen as nothing but. And now, I mean, let me expand upon that. Like I've mentioned, when it comes to history, I firmly, get away from this noise, I firmly believe that that is really mostly how you need to view history. Um, maybe not completely. Some people would disagree with me. Some people would say, well, you know, that's impossible. Or, you know, you, you should have, uh, you know, uh, a, a little emotion involved or a little of your own personality involved and um, it's just kind of my style but um, I don't want people to get it twisted I don't want people to misunderstand me and you know again um, some ultimately will um, some may have already been turned off by now and and I really can't help that um, I'm not taking back anything that I've said on any videos that I've ever posted uh, but I just want to expand upon things a little bit more and, and let folks know that um that the way I try to analyze history is from a very, very objective and detached point of view. Um, and I guess it might be safe to say that sometimes that can even be to a fault. But um, just to let you guys know where I stand, uh, I, I, I felt that was kind of important. Anyhow guys, um, this is just kind of a filler video. I'm just kind of milling back and forth because I can't walk up to the main street because it'll be too loud. But it is a beautiful day here in Old Ellicott City. Um, I'm so glad. I, it is balmy. It uh, got to the mid-80s today. Uh, just beautiful. Hence my uh, cold soda. and It's just wonderful. Anyhow, um, we will be back in Gettysburg soon. 
uh, I got a new phone which doesn't upload things as speedily as I would like it to <clears throat> sometimes it does them super fast sometimes it does them so slow that I give up and I cancel the upload so there may be some jitters in the uploads uh, uh, in the near to mid future and all apologies for that but there's a lot of stuff in the can and uh, we'll see if we can post up some more pretty soon here anyhow folks till the next one